is Paul, and welcome to Positively Paul. Yeah, and we've been talking about all kinds of singing concepts and musical concepts and performance concepts and group dynamics and learning of songs and songs that support your brand, etc. <coughs> um, and oh, so that we before we leave one of these concepts, kind of the anchoring. If you think about these concepts, the vocal elevator, the honey pair, all oh, right, and we got our wave box helmet. Thank you um, to Ben Lowe out in California, and uh, my conversation with um, Adam Kitt out in California as well, different, several hours away, and then uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, but a lot of these will be right down into the fulcrum and making sure that we have good posture. So these really connect, and, and all of them do, all of these concepts do. Um, but what order and can we simplify? Because I really, I really like a lot of these concepts. They work so well for me and people that I work with. Again, if there's any of these concepts that somebody says, no, don't do that, horrible, evil, right? Well, then listen to them. Um, unless it works for you, then, then listen to this. And if something else works for you, then listen to that. So it's everybody pulling on the same end of the rope. It's not like two separate camps. You can only look at it this way and you can only look at it that way. And I had such a great experience, Lawrence, and I hope that Steve did too. But a friend of mine, Steve, Steve Scott, and I did a class at Harmony U one night. Um, and we called it Left Brain, Right Brain. And it's more about, man, if it's, if you can be very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Conceptual, and, or you can be very literal, and um, it's actually, you need both. So there were, the, the, the thing was, I was going to be very conceptual and Steve was only allowed to be very literal in here's what you need to do in order to uh, affect this sound. And both of us struggled um, because there were times that I went, okay, I need you to do this and, and be more pedagogical. And there were times where Steve's like, man, I so badly want to use a concept. And um, so it's really, it's not one or the other. It's determining kind of where you're at in the spectrum of literal to um, conceptual, and then finding the things that work for you. We need to hear things differently. There is no one approach that works for every single person on the planet. Um, you might hear one of these things and go, wow, that totally works for me. And then you even may refine it. And that is totally cool. So one thing that I promised um, was that we would start talking about how to bring people into enjoying music, right? And, and singing. And it doesn't have to be the one big concept that I'll share is that bringing people into singing does not mean that these people that come in have to enjoy it the way I want them to enjoy it, not the way they want to enjoy it. Ooh. I mean, it sounds good. It's easy to say, and you go, oh yeah, it makes total sense. I would never force people to, you know, enjoy something only if I approve of it. But yet, we do that all the time. We do it all the time. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's in a choir or if it's in a chorus or in, in school or <clears throat> in a community choir or a competition chorus or whatever it's going to be. Um, I think there needs to be different, um, what do they say? Different strokes for different folks, you know, different outreaches for everybody. So what's that? You never heard of that? Well, your dad's got a ton of them. Okay. You know, these are, uh, I have to look up and see where that actually came from. I might save this because I really like that. Would you mind turning this for me, Jackson? Or do you want me to do it? Awesome. And we might have to grab this 
and these, and that's about it. Now, what I'm going to be using, yeah, we don't need this. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I've been working out with the boys. Um, I don't know, about every day, Jackson? Mm -hmm. Yep, almost every day. Um, maybe five days for sure. Five days for sure. A, a week, but um, maybe a little bit more. Um, see the color of my hair? Yeah. And they're teenagers. So I have my hands full. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, right? Awesome. So tonight I promised that we would start talking about bringing people into music or enjoying singing. And, and one of the things that I've already hit on is um, having a different perspective. We see things the way that we see things because in many ways, whatever group you're a part of or whatever, um, um, I don't want to say um, society, but whatever singing society you're a part of, here's kind of what happens. Um, I work a lot in, in barbershop music, but not entirely. I work with um, contemporary acapella groups, but a lot of acapella. But in, in barbershop, there's this thing where it's almost like um, Mackinac Island. Yeah, love Mackinac Island. Um, um, my wife's parents live there year round. Yeah, so we know the island really well. And you see the horses and they have these blinders. And that's to get them so that they're not paying attention to all of the, you know, silly things going on on the road and they can just focus on where they need to go. And that's kind of the way it is that I've seen in barbershop is that people come into barbershop and they get these blinders and they're like this and they go, wow, we could totally sing here and get new members. And it would be awesome if we did this and oh, we could sing this song. People would go crazy for that. And then over time, Everyone else around them and goes, yeah, that's not what we do, but that's not what we do, but that's not what we do. <laughs> Until pretty soon, we can only see, you know, this very straight, narrow path. And ne'er shall we veer off and explore. And so I think that's one of the big things is um, discovering about our perspective and what things that we're doing that are amazing and things that we need to improve upon to make what it is we do more attainable and attractive and just plain simply letting people be more um, aware of what it is we do. Now down here where you can't see, I have um, a presentation that I use a lot. Not so much that it's about the presentation, it's about the concepts in it. And I'm using it just to keep me from free flowing all over the place. Because um, sometimes it's like a circus up here. Da, 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 and, and if I don't stay on target, um, we can go off into the weeds and pretty, be, pretty soon who knows what I'd be talking about. Um, so here's the first thing. I'm going to uh, ask a question. And the question is, What do you feel your responsibility is to your singing group, chapter, chorus, choir, etc.? And even if you hold an office in some of those groups, let's say you're in high school and, and you are a section leader. Hey, I think it's my job to learn the music and, and and be an example, and maybe even get in front of the group and sing um, as an example, or um, to tell everybody else that they're singing it wrong. <laughs> I hope that's not the case, but some people could say that. And you could say, I'm the president, and I'm the you know music vice president, or whatever it is, I'm the director. And uh, here's what it comes down to. If you were to ask every single person what they felt their responsibility was to their chapter or their group, 
less than 1%, less than 1% would say that it's to bring in new members. Yeesh. So, less than 1%. Or, here's the first concept. What if we didn't just rely on those outgoing, gregarious, um, could even be those hey-ho guys or, or people um, going out and attracting people or in some cases offending people. Um, what if we made it so that everybody wanted to be a part of helping our groups grow in number? Well, we've talked about growing in skill sets and abilities and artistry. Why not this? So, or we rally the entire troops and bring them to bear on our growth. And I think this is probably a better plan than this, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, I have goals and ha. Ah. Here's just a great concept. What is the best way to hear a cappella music? Hmm. Do you remember Memorex? It is Memorex. It's the opposite. It is live. That's the best way to hear our music. It's the best way to experience a cappella. And it's really cool when it's not done up on a stage, when it's just like right here and it's very visceral and you can feel it. And that's the best way. So that's just a concept. We're, we're gonna be using these in the future. <clears throat> the next concept I'm gonna share is, we talked about spectrum. Um, let's just use this. This isn't the only, um, spectrum that we could use. We could have a learning group. Let's do this. Or we could have, I already know almost everything you need to know. Um, have a more elite group. Now, I think there's a lot of people that would think that really the only place you want to end up is here. And I'll tell you what, that would not work. If all of our groups are elite, that means this is the only people that we can attract. And if these people are elite, they're probably already singing or performing somewhere. And you're going to ask them to leave what they're doing to join what you're doing. And people say, well, yeah, that makes sense because what I'm doing is awesome. Let's just say that it's, you have a barbershop chorus, just again, for something to pick, or you have a contemporary a cappella chorus and somebody is singing in their community choir. What if the community choir's goal or plan to growth is to pull you away from what you're currently doing? Are you going to move? No, is the answer, because you like this and you know it. So what makes you think they're going to, this, this doesn't work. It falls under its own weight. So now let's be, a, let's be um, approachable for, people of all singing or, and performing ilks. So if we can, if we can have chapters that fulfill the need all across the spectrum, that's what we need. And you could say, Hey, fun and only working hard, not as much fun. In fact, we will not allow fun. Now there's probably a mix there. It's probably not a very good analogy to say fun and working hard because, hey, I like to work hard in music and it's fun for me, but you can create your own spectrum. But I like this one, learning to elite, emerging singers, discovering that you're a singer. So 
Um, that's my concept there. And again, we'll start tying these together late, later. Now, here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> think about what you think the public might think about, let's say, your style of music. Or in this case, we'll pick again barbershop. Oh, it's uh, only guys can sing it. Um, only old guys. Um, only old white guys. Only old white guys with boater hats and striped vests. Um, and maybe a big curly mustache, you know, a handlebar mustache. Maybe that's what people think. And then they think, hey, after about two songs, all the songs sound alike. Um, maybe they think it's corny. Maybe we, maybe you think that that's what they would say. Ah, remember we talked about the stage presence or the stage, uh, stage fright thing. It's what you think people think is different than what they actually think. Because I'll tell you what, everyone has experienced this, that you bring your neighbor to the show or a friend or a family member or whomever, co-worker to a show, and it's the first time they've experienced this acapella music thing, and they walk out, and what do they always say? What's the first thing that they say when they see you in the, in the lobby? Wow! That is the first thing. That is the number one answer. I, um, somebody told me about a year ago that I've worked with, I forget what they said, six or 7,000 singers. And so I've asked this question many, many, many times. And that is always the number one answer. And we could have groups that are just emerging and just learning and maybe they're not singing in tune, you know, that often but they're having a great time. And then there could be some that are just perfection. But guess what? It doesn't matter where you're at on the spectrum. The number one thing that we hear about every single one of these groups from people in the audience, not people in other groups, the people in the audience is, wow. That is the thing that we need to take away. Because it's not about what people in other groups that are similar to ours think. It's what the general public thinks that's important. So if you have someone saying, hey, here's how you do music. and You have to do it this way. And you, do, 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 and you do all those things correctly and no one buys your CD. Or you do this and 40,000 or 100,000 100, or a million people buy your CD. Who's right? Wow is right. So here's what I'm going to say. We don't have a product issue. It's not about moving from here to here or here to here and here. No, we do not have a product issue. People love what we do at any level. People love barbershop music, for example. Some just don't know it yet, right? And so that's, that's the neat thing. If you want to watch, here's a great video. If you go out on YouTube, and I, I forget what it's called. Um, I think it's called Old Men Singing, or Old Guys, Old Men, either one should work. Old Men Singing at Tim Hortons. Look up that video. I'm not saying this to be mean, but they're not at the elite level. And there are other groups that have looked upon this um, chorus singing at Tim Hortons. If you're not familiar with Tim Hortons, it's kind of like, um, sorry, Dunkin' Donuts and anybody that works there, but it's like Dunkin' Donuts, but way better. And uh, having gone to, to college or university on the Canadian border, um, it's Canadian based. And it is amazing. But these guys are singing in this donut shop. And it's not at an elite level. But you look at the comments. You look at the comments on there. And just, you could spend three hours. And here's what you'll hear. My goodness, these guys are amazing. I would pay to see these guys. 
can we start up a fund to have these guys create a CD? And the, the list goes on and on and on and on. And then one person gets out there and they say, you know, I actually sing barbershop music and these guys, if they went to competition, wouldn't fare well because their tonal center was, uh, was lacking and, and it was a little plotty in their, in their delivery and phrase endings needed to be lifted and the key change was suspect, etc., etc. Yeah, maybe all that was true. And guess what the rest of the world did to that guy? <clears throat> right? And it got really bad. He goes, no, I'm just saying. Well, you can just say it somewhere else because we know what we like and we don't like you and we like them. So they had, they had over, I forget, like 1.6 million views. And it was way, 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 way positive and like the tiniest bit negative. And where do you think the tiny bit negative came from? Yeah. <laughs> Other barbershop singers. Like, saying that's not what we are. Yeah, we are that. And we are this. 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 We need to celebrate all different kinds. I mean, the Barbershop Harmony Society has everyone in harmony. It doesn't say only the alert, the emerging singers. It doesn't say only the elite. It doesn't say only men or only women. It's just, this is for everybody, right? Let's celebrate that. And so here's the neat thing I don't ever want to hear. I don't ever want to hear again. Well, those people shouldn't sing in public until they get better. Hmm. Because you can look up that video and if you can tell me why you think it went viral. I, I have to tell you this story. I won't, I won't mention their name. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> but uh, I'll put it this way. They were, pre they were the president of the Barbershop Harmony Society for about 36 hours. And uh, this gentleman and I were on faculty together at uh, Ontario District's um, um, I forget what they call it, Harmony College or, or whatever nomenclature that they use. And uh, I said, you know, I, kn I think I know how to make a barbershop video go viral. And he said, well, what's that? And I said, well, it just needs to meet these two criteria. And he said, huh, makes sense. And sung well. I said, nope, it just needs to meet these two criteria. And he and I um, uh, talked for about mm, about a half hour, and it was pleasant. I mean, the guy's a super smart guy, um, and and he said, you know, you make a really compelling case, but I think we're just going to agree to disagree. I think it's three criteria, and you think it's two. Um, and he says, really, I think it's just sing well. And I said, okay. No big deal. So about two weeks later, um, this video of old men singing at Tim Hortons comes out and it gets 1.6 million views and it is overwhelmingly positive. And it's sung not an elite level. And some people were saying, oh, these guys aren't good for barbershop. I'm like, oh my gosh, these guys are amazing for barbershop. I love these guys. And um, I remember, I remember I was playing, I was on playing on the floor with Jackson and Parker doing Legos when I got a call from the president of the society going, how did you do that? And I said, how did I do what? Well, there's a video that just came out that got 1.6 million views and it meets your two criterion and it doesn't meet mine. I said, well, I didn't do it. I mean, I didn't sit at the computer and hit it. Oh, 1.6 million times. He goes, no, but how did you know that? Because that's what people want. They're not, not everybody's looking for elitism. I'm not saying this is bad, right? I'm just saying that this is a thing. It's not the thing. Because people love people all along the spectrum because they can relate. Joe Cocker was not an elite singer. He was an every man. Yeah, he was... And every man that just wanted to share who he was. Yeah. 
There's something to that. So this, I'm going to, now the question probably becomes, what is or what are the two criteria? Yeah, I think I'll share that with you. I said, <coughs> as long as you can have, um, here's what's going to attract people. You can be anywhere along the spectrum, but if you are performing in a way and songs that meet these two criteria, they are, Songs that are familiar, oh, and songs that are approachable. There we go. There we go. So the song that these gentlemen singing in Tim Horton's saying was, um, Can you feel the love tonight, tonight? It is where we are. Yeah. <clears throat> now, almost everyone's going to know that song because it comes from what? The Lion King, right? And there was another video that they did that very same night that didn't have hardly any hit. I mean, hits. My boys correct me constantly. Views, right? Views. <laughs> so that can be taught. <coughs> and it was McNamara's band. Oh, the band, 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 and it was on the same night, and that one got next to zero hits. Views. Views. You should write views in there just so it's documented, Jackson. That's funny. <clears throat> yeah, so it didn't, the second song didn't score real high on Familiar. And the first one does. Now, here's the next thing. If you watch them in that video, are they singing on a stage? No, they're singing in booths and at a table and they're dressed like everyday people because here's the neat thing. Everybody can relate to that because when someone's performing and just dressed in everyday clothes and not on a stage, there's no crevasse between us and them. Look what we can do. When it's just like this, it's look what we can do together. And the only difference between this person that's currently watching and this current, this person is currently performing the way they're dressed and everything is which way they're facing. And that's the only difference. Very approachable. But if you're dressed like Twinkies, what are Twinkies? That I call them Twinkies because they all look alike. If everybody's wearing, you know, the cream colored shirts and the black slacks or whatever it is that everybody wears, then it looks like us and them again. And that's not very approachable. So I'm not saying for performances you shouldn't do that, but we're talking about how to bring people in to this wonderful hobby of singing, of singing. So I want to thank my son Jackson for all of his help, all of his support, and teaching me about hits, um, views, teaching me about views. And love him so much for all of his support. Not that I don't love Amy and Parker, just that he's here supporting tonight. So as always, everybody, continue to make music.